Hey guys, uh, in this video, I will show you how to use Python to do web crawling. So in a sample program I'm going to show you today, uh, it's a Pokemon game, and which uses database to host all the information regarding the Pokemons. And the data in this database are collected from an external website using web crawling. So in this sample game, I can control this Pikachu and walk on the map. So every few steps, I can encounter a random Pokemon that is pulled from the database. Let me keep walking to get another Pokemon. Right, so every time I encounter a Pokemon, uh, the Pokemon picture as well as other information will be retrieved from the database and displayed on the screen. Okay. So in today's video tutorial, uh, I'm going to show you how this is implemented in Python. Uh, by interacting with database and also using web crawling. Okay, so basically, uh, if you have watched my previous YouTube video, uh, when the player walks around, uh, it will trigger the get Pokemon function that I wrote in the database module. So this function will uh, generate some SQL queries, okay, like, uh, like this one, uh, select star from Pokemon meta database table, where Pokedex ID greater than zero. And uh, also create, generate another SQL query to select a move for the selected Pokemon. So basically, uh, these SQL queries are generated in the Python end, and the Python will execute those SQL queries uh, to interact with database to retrieve Pokemon. Okay, so now let's take a look at what's in the Pokemon meta database table. All right, so the database I was using is SQLite, uh, which is Python built-in database. Uh, if you need to use uh, some other database uh, like MySQL, uh, please follow my previous YouTube video. And uh, the SQL client that I'm using is DB Browser for SQLite. So basically, this Pokemon meta table lists all the Pokemon information, uh, their metadata, including the name, uh, the type 1, type 2, base weight, height, the chance to be caught, base CP, and so on. So how do we insert this data into the database table? Of course, I didn't do it manually, uh, one by one. Instead, I was executing the select SQL query for insert in the Python end, like this. Okay. Uh, but you may still wonder, oh, this is a lot of calls. I, I, I don't want to type those SQL queries in the Python end as well. Okay. So, of course, I didn't do it manually in the Python end either. Okay. But instead, I was dynamically creating those SQL queries, uh, I mean the Python code for the SQL queries, using another Python program. And also, I didn't come up with those uh, values, the name, the type, type 1, type 2 things. Uh, I didn't come up with them by myself. Uh, but instead, uh, I was collecting those information from uh, thanks to the internet, okay, from some online websites. And this is the website that I found from Google, uh, which is a very nice one that lists all the Pokemons. And if you click the individual link of the Pokemons, Okay, it will also, uh, you'll be also able to see uh, more detailed information about individual Pokemon, like the, the candies, uh, possible moves, possible social moves, uh, what it evolves into, and so on. So the basic idea is that we want to borrow those information from some external sources, like this website. Okay, but of course, we don't want to manually copy all those information and paste it into a notepad and reorganize them into SQL queries. Uh, we don't want to do that. Okay. So instead of manually doing this kind of thing, uh, we want to develop a program that will automatically navigate this web page. Okay identify all those links from the web page and go into each web page link to get more detailed information regarding each Pokemon. Okay. So in other words, uh, the program should be able to capture those values, okay, damage, type, name of the moves, and so on okay, from these pages and automatically organize those information as SQL queries. 
So that's what I'm going to talk about in this video tutorial. How to develop a web crawler to collect the information from the data source. Right, so translating that logic into pseudocode. Uh, this is what we are going to do. So first, uh, we identify the starting page, uh, which was the list of Pokemons. Okay. And we want to get the HTML source code of the starting page. Right, so for based on that HTML, uh, we need to identify all the hyperlinks to individual Pokemon's page. Right, so after entering each Pokemon's page, we need to identify detailed information including the name, types, base CT, base HP, uh, basic move, special move, and, and so on. Okay. And concatenate those information as an insert SQL query. Okay, so that we can finally execute the query. So the Pokemon's information will be inserted into the Pokemon meta database table. Okay, so this will be the sample code for the first step uh, listed in my pseudocode. Okay, so in order to access some internet content, uh, the package that we need to import is called requests. Uh, if you don't have this package yet, please use pip to download this uh, package. Right, so uh, this is the method included in the request package to, in order to access some HTML content. Okay. So in this method, uh, what I need is just to put the uh, URL for the starting page as the argument to the request.get method. Okay. And returned object is a response object. Okay. Uh, but we don't use this response object directly, uh, but instead, we use the content attribute of the response object. Okay. So by trans uh, transforming the content attribute into string object, uh, we can get the HTML source code represented in the string format. Okay. So right now, if I run this sample code, okay. so this will be the uh, printed HTML content of the page that we got. But you may have already noticed the return HTML is saying uh, it's an error. Uh, the web page is unavailable. Okay. Uh, however, this link is actually a, it's a working link if I copy and paste the URL into a web browser. Okay. So what happened is uh, many websites will block you if you are trying to access their website content programmatically. Okay. So what we want to do here is to let our Python program mimic the behavior of a web browser instead of just a Python program. Okay, so we can do this by uh, setting up a headers object. Okay, with some, uh, so you can Google online to find uh, how to write the headers object. Okay, and add, we want to add this header object as the second argument to, uh, to the request.get method. Like this, okay, I'm using a keyword argument here. So if I save it and rerun the program again, you see, uh, this time uh, the website returned a different uh, HTML content. Okay, so which means this time uh, we successfully got the HTML source for the starting page. Okay, so we have finished step number one already. And our next step is to, based on the HTML content we just uh, printed in the Python, uh, we want to identify all the hyperlinks to individual Pokemon's pages. Okay, so and this is where we need to use regular expression to identify those URLs. Okay. So in the uh, web browser page, uh, if you hover your mouse onto those Pokemon's page, okay, if you look at the left bottom corner, it shows the URLs for these hyperlinks. Okay. However, Python doesn't see this uh, nice uh, visual page uh, in the web browser. Okay, so what Python sees is the HTML source like this. Okay, so we need to tell Python uh, where to look for the URLs in this HTML code, okay, which sounds a very daunting task to us. Okay, but this can be done okay, easily by using regular expression. So, for example, uh, we need to uh, first we want to locate the URL for the Bulbasaur, for example. Okay, so we can search Bulbasaur and locate um, the URL links, okay, which is this one. A H R E F equal the URL links 
following the domain name. Okay. So you can search for a few other Pokemon's name uh, just to make sure uh, all the Pokemon names URL are following some similar patterns. Okay. So after browsing a few Pokemon's URL links, uh, I guess uh, right here, hey, I think this is it. Um, okay. So the patterns for the URL link for each Pokemon page looks like starting with uh, B uh, followed by the number, uh, which is the Pokedex ID for the Pokemon, then followed by the URL links here, and then followed by uh, some title uh, string. Okay. So probably uh, this will be the template that we can use to identify the regular expression for Pokemon URLs. So now it's time to come up with a regular expression for the Pokemon's URL. So this website is called uh, regex101.com, uh, which is a very helpful website where I can test and verify whether my regular expression is working or not. So in this website, you can copy and paste the whole HTML content in a test stream box. And also you may want to change the regular options by including the I and S, okay, which stands for case instances and single line uh, options. Okay. okay, so for the meaning of these options, as well as uh, the details regarding how to write that regular expression, uh, please uh, follow my channel and watch my other YouTube videos. And also I have a uh, Udemy course regarding regular expression. Okay. And here's just a quick tip how to come up with the regular expression that you need. Okay, so this is what I usually do. Uh, I usually go back to the HTML and copy the, uh, the URL pattern for one specific Pokemon okay, and paste it into the regular expression part. Right, so first, uh, I just escape all the functioning symbols that got recognized by the regular expression. Okay, and then uh, I need to replace any specific thing regarding one Pokemon Okay, to generalize it to a more, a more generalizable pattern, okay, like extending from 001 to any number, okay, repeat by three times. Okay. And the bubble sour is just for one Pokemon, uh, probably I want to replace it with any stream. Okay. All right, so now uh, I can verify whether my regular expression is working or not. Okay. This looks more general than the previous specific bubble sour link. So this pattern is working for Bulbasaur, it's working for Ivysaur, for Venusaur, okay, for uh, Charizard. Okay. So generally it looks far, so far so good. Okay. So this tool is really helpful uh, when you want to quickly test whether your reg regular expression is working or not. Okay, so now coming back to Python, uh, we are ready to implement the regular expression from the Python end. Uh, before writing anything, uh, we want to import another package called RE, uh, which stands for regular expression. Okay. So basically, uh, we just need two lines to uh, do the pattern compiling and the matching. Okay. So basically, uh, we need to invoke the read.compile method. Okay. And for the first argument, uh, we want to copy and paste the regular expression pattern that we have already verified and tested. In this one, copy and paste it into uh, the first argument of the uh, read.compile method. Okay. Uh, one thing you need to be careful is to escape any special characters that got recognized by the Python. Uh, in this case, uh, the, the double quotes are starting and end of the uh, string object, so we need to escape them. And the second argument is the options that we want to use in, uh, in a regular expression and uh, we need to use this symbol to separate multiple options if you have more. Okay. So read.compile, okay, compiling the regular expression, uh, will return a pattern an object. Okay. And that pattern object has a method called find all, okay, which basically does, does the matching of your regular expression pattern to the source uh, stream. Okay. okay, so after these steps, whatever get matched by this regular expression are stored in this result object as a collection of the matches. So if I want to get access to those elements, I can write a for loop to iterate through uh, the elements in the, uh, in the collection. 
Okay, so if I run it, uh, this is going to be the result. Just wait for a few seconds. So now all the HTML pieces that contain the uh, URLs are parsed out. Okay. Uh, but you may have noticed uh, we have a lot of unwanted components like the uh, the B or title things here. Okay. Uh, if we only want to get the IDs of each Pokemon plus the URL, uh, we can use grouping in regular expression. So this can be done by uh, grouping whatever elements that we want to get by using a pair of brackets. Okay, so for example, uh, I want to get the number part, okay, the number part, but not including the pound sign. I also want to get the URL string that starts with the back uh, the slash, and that needs ends before the double quotation. Okay, so right here, uh, I don't want to include the escape symbol. Right, so after making this change, okay, I can also uh, print the element one more time. Okay, so this time you see uh, the element will be the tuples, okay, and the element in the tuple will be the uh, whatever we grouped using the brackets. Okay, so knowing that ele each element is a tuple, uh, we can change the code a little bit like this, okay. to uh, to extract the ID, okay, element 0, into Pokedex ID variable. And this part of the URL can be extracted as element 1 and assigned to another variable URL part. Okay. And we can uh, concatenate the domain name for the website plus the URL part together as the full URL. So this is the full Pokemon URL. And we can really use the request.get method to get the HTML source content for the Pokemon page okay, and store the returned object in response. And then use the response.content to get access to the uh, HTML source for the Pokemon page. Right, so I'm gonna skip the details uh, after getting the page URL HTML content. Okay, so you can try yourself by writing more regular expressions to pass out the types, moves, including the regular moves and the special moves, and the other info from the specific Pokemon page. Okay. And uh, one more thing is to, uh, it's a good habit to always wait for a few milliseconds between each uh, request.get method, uh, because we don't want to create too much traffic to the target, your, uh, target website, uh, otherwise, uh, it's very likely to be recognized as a robot. If you like this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel as well as my other platforms. Thank you for watching.